you can't tell the world who you are if you don't know who you are. So you have to make sure that you have that kind of locked down because that will then secure the confidence behind it. So many people that I run into are like, I don't want to be on camera. I don't, I don't like that's not happening. I don't want to speak. I don't know what to talk about. As soon as you actually know what to talk about and you have your content, you'll have no problem freely speaking about the stuff that you're passionate about. Welcome to the Her First Podcast, a platform to help online business owners, coaches, and creators gain the confidence needed to build a successful business while creating a sustainable lifestyle balance. We are here to help you prioritize yourself in business and life. I'm Joanna Newton. And I'm Michelle Poulani. In this podcast, along with the Her First Collective, you can engage in the challenges women face in business, ways to increase your impact or income online, and how to make it all work while launching, scaling, or maintaining. Spoiler, it's not about perfectionism, hustling, or a copy-paste methodology. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Her First Podcast. Today, we are talking all about the art of capturing content. We've talked a lot in previous episodes about the importance of creating a personal brand using social media, and video content plays a huge role in that growth. And I'd like to introduce to you our very special guest who's going to share exactly what you need to do to capture high quality content and make it engaging. Ashley Trelli is a managing partner at Capture the Content. She is a wife, dog mom, a former corporate professional with a lifelong passion for photography and videography. In 2023, she and her husband made the bold decision to leave the corporate world behind and pursue their dream of entrepreneurship. Together, they founded Capture the Concept, which is dedicated to helping businesses narrate their stories through expertly crafted video productions. Within just one year, they expanded their team, hiring their first employee, a skilled marketing manager, enabling them to offer comprehensive social media management services to their clients. They specialize in showcasing the human stories and passions behind every business they work with. Welcome to the show, Ashley. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have you on here. And I'll share a little bit of our personal connection before we dive in to the details. The most fun thing about Ashley is that I am connected with her husband. Her husband went to college with me, and we did most of our management school projects together. And he was into video production and was like, hmm, if I make videos and you write the essay, we can get A's together. And that is what we did. Um, which is really fun. And both of us, Joe and myself, we both started production-based businesses. Ashley's part of that business, a huge part of that business, a co-owner. And I'm so excited to have her on the show to talk about her expertise. Um, One more note before we dive into to today's topic, I want to share, you'll notice Michelle is missing today. She is out traveling. I believe right now she's in London having a blast. I'm seeing it all over her Instagram and wish I was there with her. But she isn't here today because as of filming, she's out out traveling. So today is just me and our guest, Ashley. So moving on to our topic for the day. As I've shared, we've talked so much on this podcast about the importance of a personal brand and building your business and, and growing your business, finding clients, finding customers. But it can be really hard to figure out where to start. And We all know if you're on social media for even 30 seconds, you know video content is important, but it can be really overwhelming to even think about getting started if this is new to you, if you've never done it before. The lighting, the equipment, the cameras, where where to look, what to do can be a lot. So you work with clients every day. You help people with this. What does someone need to do to just get set up? to be prepared to even think about creating video content? Well, the good thing is, is that almost everybody who's going into social media, some sort of, you know, promoting their business, their personal brand, whatever it is they're doing on social media, they probably have a cell phone. And that's the first place to get started, to be honest. You know, as professional social media managers, of course, we can create you high-end content with beautiful video, but not everybody has the budget to start there and they don't have the team to help them. So it's kind of a DIY and get it up as as soon as you can. Um, So 
there's a lot of places that you could start. My number one suggestion would be to start with equipment. So you're going to want to have your phone, of course, but you can use just regular audio from, from your phone, but you can also use external microphones. Those could be super helpful and really give you a better audio quality based on what you're doing. A lot of times, social media videos and reels and TikToks, they just use trending audio. You don't even need to be speaking. It depends on what kind of content you're putting out. We could talk about that a little bit later. The other thing too is you're going to want some sort of lighting, whether it's a ring light or, you know, natural lighting. You want to make sure that your what you're filming looks good. If it looks good to you, it'll look good on the camera. If it looks dull and you can't see it too well, you're not going to be able to see it on the camera as well. And my number one thing that I always tell everyone in my in my network is to get a phone tripod. It's you're already doing your work every day. There's so much content you can create by just setting up your phone and recording what you're doing, whether it's answering emails or it's creating something. Maybe you're, you know, creating an item or you're a, a small business maker. Who knows, right? But you're you're actively working every day so you can simply film it and use that for content later. One thing I do is like I'll I'll be walking my dog and I film her walking because that's aesthetic content you could put like a tip over. Um, another thing too that you can get is a gimbal for your phone. So if you work, maybe you own or work at a sporting facility, maybe it's basketball training, it's a it's a baseball, um, you know, batting cages, something like that, you may need to have more movement than most. So having a gimbal, which is like a stabilizer for your phone can allow you to get really beautiful content and not have it look all jumpy and make people dizzy. So we can leave a bunch of links to different, you know, pieces of equipment in the show notes. I can I can send those to you, Joanna. But um, you really don't need much. But if you want to elevate just a little bit more than just your phone, those things can help. It can be easy to think, oh, I need to get a professional camera, a big lighting setup and all of these things to, you know, create studio production level content. And there's a time and place for that, right? Like there 100% is a time and place for that quality content. We both own studios. Obviously, there's a place for that. But the the reality is you need to be capturing content all of the time. So you need to make it super easy so you have the equipment, you have the things that you need to just create and get things. And, you know, I think with the with AI taking over and all of these things, your homegrown organic videos are going to mean so much. Your the clip of your dog walking with a tip over it. I know for me, I'm I'm personally like on and off good and bad at my social media. Sometimes I post a lot and sometimes I don't. Some of my best videos that got the most views is just a video of me working. I speed it up so it looks like I'm working really fast. And I put I put just some really good written content over it. And they get tons of views and tons of engagement because I could have done that same video with a stock photo or a stock video, but it's me, you know, and and that clip was created with my iPhone and a tripod. And I think I made made sure I had like decent lighting in the room at that time, whether it's natural light, I think I had a light. But you know what I mean? Very simple to create. You don't need a lot. You can get an iPod, some lighting. You can spend $100 on Amazon and get the things that you need to set you up for success. Absolutely. It's all about showcasing who you are as a person, why you're passionate about what your business is or what you're even just talking about. Sometimes, you know, if you think about influencers and stuff, they may have become influencers because they had a deep passion for what they were you know, communicating to the world. So as long as you can convey that, we're we're more accustomed to seeing content that's not perfect, which is a good and a bad thing, right? It's good for anybody creating content. It's not great for us who create professional content. Um, but even if you look through YouTube, you know, people are filming things on their phone and it's okay. They're like you said, there's a time and a place. Sometimes you need to elevate because the professionalism in your content will then show the professionalism of your business as well. And and that's the thing to think about as your business grows, you can invest in production quality, but you have to get there. And if you get there and you're getting used to talking on camera, getting used to what to say, how you make things engaging. If you wait till you have the money to have a whole studio and fund that production, you may never get to the point where you can 
have professional and pay for professional quality content. So I think, I, and I see this a lot with business owners, whether it's their product, their website, their whatever, they don't do anything because they can't have the top thing, but you can't get the top thing if, if you don't do anything. So figuring out ways that you can get started on your own are, are really important. One thing I know I'm a little personally lost on in creating my own content is like camera skills. Like I feel like I know nothing about angles and my camera settings. And like the other day, my business partner showed me this video and I was like, dude, your arm looks, how is your arm so long? How are you getting that video? And he was using his back camera of, of his iPhone to get content and like use the zoom so he could get more of the the landscape behind him. I would have never thought to do that, but it looked so cool because he was like on the beach and and riding his bike or something. And I was like, how is your arm so long? And he's like, oh, I did this. Would have never thought of that. How can the lay person like myself educate myself about like, how do I use my cam my phone camera better? How what does that look like? So one of my first first suggestions is to go on to Instagram and I pulled two accounts that I follow. I can send you them so you can link them. Um, there are creators that purposely make content showing you how to use your phone. There's, there's hacks of flipping your phone upside down to give a really elongated, cool angle. And then you just convert the footage later. You can also say you're taking, you, you know, we all, um, phone eats first, you know, everybody takes a picture of their phone before they eat it. You can put your hand on a napkin and slide your phone that way to create a smooth shot. There's a couple different ways, you know, honestly, there's endless ways to be able to kind of get different content, stuff that you're not used to, but you're not going to know unless you consume. So first of all, consume content to be able to be like, I should do something like that and look at creators that teach you how. So we'll link those. Um, but one thing I wanted sp to specifically talk about is camera settings. So at the top of your phone, you usually see 4K 30 when you go into your video settings. So what that means is you're filming in 4K, which is great that even phones can do that nowadays. And I'm talking towards iPhones. I don't have an Android, but I think there's probably similar settings. Um, so 4K 30 is 4K quality at 30 frames a second. So that is what the human eye is used to seeing. It's it's a very comfortable way of capturing. And that's that's 30 video frames per second. If you tap on the 30, you can change that. So if you change it to 60 frames a second, that's putting more data into your video, more frames into your video, and that's what you want to use if you want to slow down your footage. So if you're taking something of someone running or maybe people laughing or something and you want to slow it down from that more dramatic effect, that's what you want to make sure that you're using. So typically, anytime we film B-roll, we, we film it, which is supporting footage if people don't know what B-roll is supporting footage we film it in 4k 60 that allows us to slow it down and kind of give a more dramatic feel to the edit however you can also change it to 4k 24 so the 24 frames is less frames and it almost creates like a just a very minimal motion blur so as you're watching something that makes it more cinematic and more dramatic in that sense so a lot of times like movies are filmed in 24 frames a second because it it gives that slight blur that that we're we're accustomed to seeing in drama you know in cinematic feel so play around with those for sure one of my favorites is to use is the 4k 60 to be able to slow down when you put um, slow down footage into an edit, it makes a world of difference of how the edit comes across. So I suggest trying that out. If you were to slow down like 30 or 24 frames, you'll notice it's very jumpy because the video file doesn't have enough data to be able to make it slower and smooth, if that makes sense. So I never knew what the whole frames per second thing meant. I always saw that, never knew. Now I know that is so cool. Thank you for just making I feel like you just made that very clear to anyone listening that you don't have to be a video professional to get what you just explained and I think that's so important like understanding your tools 
anything you use, when you if you're using your iPhone camera every day, understanding what its capabilities are is so important. And uh, we'll definitely link those accounts so that people can kind of educate themselves and learn more um, about how to better use the tool that they already have in their pocket, in their hands at all time. What about lighting? Now, I know that lighting is so important. And when you're, if you're consuming content and you're scrolling, like keep in mind of like what you stop on, what, where you, where you stop your scroll and actually look at a piece of content. Lighting is a huge part of that. If you can actually see, experience, you know, understand what's going on. How can someone go about just getting better lighting without having to do it in a studio or being able to do it on the road? Like what are some ways we can do that? Yeah. So your best bet is natural lighting. Go outside or go by a window. You want to be careful of shadows and also like you may think, oh, it's sunny out. I'm going to go outside and film, but you don't want that harsh light. Honestly, overcast days are the best days um, when it's bright out, but it's even lighting. So you can either go outside or what I've done is I've kind of gone around my house and figured out like where's the good window with the good lighting overhead and maybe a lamp, something that I can, I'm evenly lit so that that way I know that's kind of like my filming spot. You can set up the background behind you to look nice. You, If you're doing a product, you can create a set. So maybe a table, maybe a backdrop. You know, they have these really cool boxes that you can buy to put your product in to take videos and photos of. So I would say your best bet is to be close to a window or outside if you can. And if those aren't a possibility, like I said, a ring light, um, a couple other lighting options, we can, we can link those too. Um, like I'm using one right now. So in, in our studio here. Um, so there's a couple different options, but mostly go outside. Outside is key. I love like when I'm trying to film like quick response videos on TikToks, like to people's content, be comments, because if people leave a comment, you can, if you didn't know this, you can leave like them a video reply. And right when you're going back and forth, trying to respond to those things, popping outside is so nice. One, I don't have to worry about my house is clean right? Like, like, I don't have to worry if it's clean. And the outside light is just very forgiving. And I think makes you very visible. And it's just a great way to do that. I also think that's engaging. If I'm like, kind of chatting and walking around my backyard, like it, there's movement, there's things happening that can uh, really drive some interest. Also makes it very clear. I'm a real person. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a person in a, I'm a real person living a real life, walking down the street or in my yard or in my car. Cars sometimes have really good lighting when you're sitting in, in your car. You know, those are things real people do and make people want to connect with you authentically. One of the things I know people talk about a lot, I know nothing about what this means at all, is framing. And I saw this thing once that was like making fun of like the way millennials take pictures versus Gen Z. And apparently like millennials, we take like photos where we're like, we make ourselves the center of the photo and like Gen Z is better at like framing themselves in their background. Let's talk about like framing and how the, that plays a role in any sort of tips you have there. Yes. So being a millennial, I am always that way, but my marketing manager is a Gen Z. So it's very interesting to see the difference with what we actually create. So I am from the selfie era. <laughs> so selfie style, anything, everything that I film, you get the good angle, you lose all the chins. It's beautiful, right? But with Gen Z's, they're more in the look at me in my element type creation. So they'll not just stand and smile and pose for a picture. They're looking off into the distance and posing in a way of like, look at me in action at my concert or look at me actively baking or whatever, where we're so used to like point, smile, click, you know, that's how we take teapot. Content. Right. <laughs> yep. Chin down the whole thing. So <laughs> kissy face, you know, all of it. So it's definitely evolved, but it's evolved in a creative way. That's so cool. So, you know, putting yourself like it, I think it's more of take the extra step to think about what the photo wants to be. Do you want a lower angle? Well, maybe you don't like a lower angle of yourself, but you position your body in a way that you can or sit on the floor, right? Like you don't always have to be standing with your hand on your hip and smiling. 
So it's just think about different ways of, of evoking an emotion out of the content you're creating. That is the number one thing that does well on social media because it creates this relatable content. People want to consume content that they either feel something about or they're like, I need to share this with my friend because it's so them. That's how you create your viral content. So if you want someone to feel happy, make sure you're in like this happy stance. You're you're using, you know, you're smiling. Um, but if you want someone to feel like this is a hard situation for me, you can look down, you know, something that's a little bit different. So think about how you read emotion and try to portray those. When it comes to framing not a human, you want to make sure that there's no clutter. Clean up your spot. You know, if you're taking a picture of the meal that you just prepared and you have napkins and scraps and stuff all behind it, it's going to look horrible. And you don't want to get so close that you can't even see the whole plate. So you want to make sure that you're taking the extra time to make it what you want to be. Use your creative brain get everything in frame or purposely don't. You don't want to just have it kind of like wonky. There's this rule of thirds in video that could actually come into play in this too. Your eye is used to either seeing someone in the center or someone in one third of the frame. So you want to be not in half, just slightly in more. So that way, if you're if you're looking across the frame, you want to be in this one third. But if you're looking across the frame this way, you want to be in this one third. So you want to be looking through the the big part of the frame. Count how many times I said frame then. But I, I love I love what you're saying because I think there's obviously a science to it, right? There's a science to creating great photos, creating great videos. But there's also two things that that I heard going on that are really important and something that an a non-professional when it comes to this can think about. One is like your confidence, your emotion. If you're confident, if you're there, if you're present, if you're showing up, you're going to create great stuff. And the other thing is to just think creatively about what you're doing. So if you go to take a photo and you just take the same photo, the same pose every time, like just think about what is the purpose of that photo? What are what are you trying to convey? How can you utilize the background? How can you think about it? What's funny is I have a seven-year-old and I think she's really, she's really good at this naturally. Like when she goes and takes a photo, like, I don't know, she just like strikes the perfect pose in the perfect place. Um, I don't know. She just does it. I'm like, I don't know where you get this from. It's not me. Because I feel good on like, if I'm talking, if I'm doing a talking video or podcast or something like that, I feel very confident. If it's just like, me walking or photo I get like really awkward um I get really awkward and once this is a funny story I was at a conference and you know those um what are they called they do them on the red carpet when the camera spins around you and takes like a ton of pictures the and then makes like a little cam yeah. yeah the 360 cam I was at a conference and I was like it was a 360 cam and I'm like how do I do this so I was like I'm gonna do it so I have this thing and I went to the guy. I was like, well, what do I do? And he was like, just be confident. It'll come out great. I'm like, I don't. What does that mean? I don't know how to do that. How do I be confident? And of course, I was not confident and my video was stupid. So that's my story. But like, you know, being the becoming the kind of person who can jump into a 360 cam, go in any setting and just be confident enough to like do something and make a choice versus like go for the teapot. I go for like the I'm trying to get better at it. Like I really am, but it's not easy for me. Yeah, same. I do the same thing. I know what pose I'm used to doing and I I that's what I always revert to, but trying to incorporate different props is something that helps if you're holding something. If you're just kind of like awkwardly standing there like just your body, it gets weird. Um but if you have something in your hand or you're showing something or you're laughing or you have a drink, just having something to do with your hands seems to like alleviate that like you know, everyone's like, "What do I do with my hands?" You know, you've heard that a thousand <laughs> times. <laughs> so um, I I think using props is another really great way, you know, to to kind of help make your photos and your videos interesting. Yeah. And I could dive into that a little bit if you want. Yeah, let's talk about it. Like, how can you 
bring in props and, and different things to just make your content more engaging, easier for you to create. Yeah. So if you think about the the content you consume, about every half a second, the, the frame is changing, right? Things are changing on your phone. It's a different camera angle. Something else is on the screen. Maybe it's a stock footage, whatever. Something is changing. A punch in, that's something that's really good to use where you have your normal frame of your like say you're doing selfie style but then you punch in closer just for like a dramatic effect but if you use props as transitions it makes your content really neat so whether you are filming something and then you go behind a wall or you use a menu to cover the the camera to reveal the meal different things that can help you create these cool transitions you've seen I'm sure the people that jump over their phone and then all of a sudden they're in a new location. That's what I mean. Utilize the the video in a creative way that can help bring you to your next shot, help you tell that story in a creative way. It's really fun to play around with too. And and just like I said before, keep consuming because it's the only way to get ideas. There's a thousand out there. (laughs) Yeah, there's so much that you can do. And I think Part of this, if you're like a business owner, right? Like you're a business owner, you might have a membership, you might have a small business, you might have a coach, you might be a coach or a course creator or something like that. You're not necessarily a content creator first, right? Like your your goal isn't influencer, your your goal isn't this, but in the world we live in, the way you find customers, the way you find new clients to work with, the way you get people to buy your products. Is, is at the end of the day, a lot of times through content. So, you know, we've talked about a lot of really practical things that you can do, the equipment you can buy, the, the way you can capture content, use your phone, use your settings. There's also a mindset shift that I think you have to go through so that you can start thinking like a content creator. You told a really funny story before we started this podcast that you were late because you were like, I've got to go do something, right? You've saw something you had to capture. Apparently there was a bear. You've got to tell the story. But there was a bear and you thought, I'm going to be late to this meeting because I got to get this footage of this bear. Yeah. So it's shifting from being working in the business to working on the business. That's a whole big shift in small business world that's really hard to do. And you can do both. But being conscious of what am I actually doing that people would care about? You know, so like I'm on my way to a meeting. I'm running late. I'm rushing. But there's a bear in the dumpster, so I obviously need to film this and Joanna will understand. You know, like there's there's that take the beat, take the photo, take the video, because that's giving your followers insight into who you are as a human. What are you up to? You know, that's how Day in the Life's got so popular. People are interested. And it's especially if you can make it aesthetic and put some nice calming music you'd be amazed at how much of that content you you actually consume just because it's easy or you're interested in somebody that you know at capture the concept our tagline is tell your story because my my famous example is if you're standing next to a competitor right say you're at a market and you're next to your competitor but i've seen your social media and i know how clean your kitchen is and i know who you are as a person and that you do all of this to support your children and you're a single mom and all this i'm going to support you because i feel like i know you like we're friends now and i want to support you in your mission where is your competitor if they're not on social media if they're not showing the world who they are and what goes into what their passion is How am I going to know that I should support them? So it's kind of deciding that, okay, now that I'm confident and solid on what it is I have to offer the world, now I need to tell them about it in an authentic way. Get rid of filters, get rid of fakeness, right? You don't want to come on as this character unless that's your goal, right? Unless you're creating a funny account where you are a character. But talking in the business world where a lot of social media comes from, Showing people who you are as your authentic self goes so far. Most of our business comes from networking because I'm talking to people and I'm making relationships and they're like, I know I could trust you. I want to work with you. That's what a social media allows you to do to many more people than you can ever talk to. Yeah. And if you're making one-on-one sales, like one of my favorite things to do for content strategies. So say you're already good at making one-on-one sales and you're like, 
your goal is to translate what you do that gets people to want to work with you and put that online so it can go to the masses. So your however you connect with them, what is the thing that makes someone want to work with you one on one? That's the same thing that's going to make someone want to engage with your social media and connect with your your target audience. You just have to start shifting your mind to think about moments to create those moments and to create that content. And the only way you're going to get there, I think, is we've talked about two things. Spend some time, probably try to like limit the amount of time you consume content, but spend time consuming content so you get what's out there and get what people are doing. But start creating. Even if, you're, even if your first stuff gets seen by nobody, like who cares? You have to get your mind into creating. Once you're creating, then you'll be like, when you're out walking down your street, you're like, that would be the perfect clip to capture to put some tip on top of. But if you're not creating, your mind isn't going to naturally go there. You kind of have to like just start and start doing it. And then you'll come up with all of these ideas. You're not even, you're not even going to be able to create all the ideas that come once you start shifting your mind to think like a content creator and start putting things out there. I know when we first started this podcast, Michelle and I would be like, what do we talk about? Like, let's come up with ideas. And we'd try to brainstorm. And that was kind of hard. We, we we would have a couple of ideas, but not do it. But then now that we do this every week, as I'm talking to people, I had a call today and I jotted down an idea for an episode because something someone said triggered in me something that I thought would be a great episode for us, right? You start to think in that way when you're, when you're actually creating. Yeah. My biggest tip to everybody is capture everything because you, even if you don't use it, at least you have it if you want to or if something comes up. I can't tell you how many times I've had this idea then I've scrolled back through my phone and I'm like, where is that clip of my dog doing super funny because I have something funny to tell the world and dogs, people love and want to watch that. You know, so like there's so many opportunities to just capture literally everything and you can delete it later, but you can't recreate it. So keep capturing for sure capture the concept I mean that great name for a company like yeah. that's like even when I was writing the little intro for this I was like how to capture content like that's what you do that's great um yeah totally like just get get going start creating you have to start somewhere and start thinking about um thinking about creating content the other thing that I see people kind of fall into the trap of like what you need to do to grow a social account and grow a brand and what you, the strategies you take if you're already large are different. Yeah. So, so like even talk big brand for a minute, like Nike, Disney, the way they run their social is not the way you need to run your social growing up. So you think you're telling me like, oh, be yourself, show your life. Well, Walt, well, Walt Disney is obviously no longer with us, but the CEO of Disney isn't doing that, no. right? Because the CEO of Disney doesn't need to do that. We are already connected to that brand. Like people know the Disney brand. There's a personal connection with the Disney brand intrinsically in everyone in the United States. Whether you like them or not, everyone knows Disney and what that means and what that entails. But they don't know you. So what you have to do to grow in the first place, even in different stages of your brand, like your original growth, when you're scaling when you're a household name, because I would love it if all of us were right household names, the strategies are a little bit different between how you show up and what you talk about. Yeah, honestly, in my opinion, it's harder for big brands because they really have to think outside of the box. A perfect example of this is Bose. Bose handed over all of their content creation to a bunch of interns like Gen Zers and said, make us some fun stuff. They're dropping the the products in every video, but they're creating like this super fun, super different content that has nothing to do with listening to music or whatever. You know, it's it's interesting to see how the big brands have to really be innovative and like trendsetters come up with things that are funny or interesting as opposed to smaller businesses where you can grow fully just showing who you are and why people should support you, it's almost harder for the bigger brands. But you're right. We already know who they are. But if you think about Disney, like going with your example, sure, we're not seeing 
old videos of Walt Disney himself, but we're seeing the joy in children, right? We want, we're, we're experiencing content that's making us feel this happiness, this wanting to be there and experience it for ourselves because we're seeing the happiness that these people are having. We're seeing the fun rides. We're seeing the joy, right? So all of that content that's making us feel is making us then go purchase a ticket and plan a trip. That's what you want to do. You could do that on your own small business social media, you know, show, oh my God, here's a testimonial of someone that's talking about how good my product is. They love my restaurant. I changed their business's trajectory because of how I've helped them with their marketing. All of these different things coming from real life people, that helps too. Your followers be like, oh, they helped them and them and that brand. They must be good. I want them. It's all about credibility building at the end yeah. of the day. I guess like the error that I see people make is they want to sell on social media. They're like, I need to sell and I need to make money from the social media and like see this immediate ROI. And then every single post is a sales pitch. It's a commercial, right? Like, oh, here are the features. Here are the benefits. Buy my thing. Buy my thing. And while, yes, you need to sell, the way you sell is a little different. Like like you're saying, like showing you know, you're you're showing real life examples. Here's like, I could tell stories of I was working with a client and this is what we did to help them sell their course. And then they sold this. I can tell that story. That makes someone say, oh, can you help me too? Like you want to create content that makes people say, how do I get you to help me? Right. You want to solve their problem. Like no matter what it is, you want to be the problem solver. Here's how I can eliminate this pain point in your life, in your business, in your belly, you know, like wherever you it is that you can help them, um, getting that point across and getting your hook kind of. So if you're if you're thinking about just like sitting there talking about a topic, creating the hook, how think about how you can change this person's life with what you're offering and that'll get them to then reach out and be like, how can you do that for me? Like you said. Yeah. Yeah, and if I think a great way, at least for me, I feel like I'm starting to formulate for me what I need to do in my personal content. Um, I build content strategies for other people. I do it for my company, but like not my personal brand. And I'm starting to formulate what that looks like for me. And I think it's because I'm starting to be better at one-on-one. -on -one. Like I'm, I'm starting to be better showing my expertise in one-on-one -on -one situations, right? And now I'm at the point where like, now I can translate that. So sometimes too, like, again, coming back to the mindset of this is like, you have to know your worth. You have to have your confidence. You have to have your, right? The, what problem do you solve? Forget about capturing content for a minute, like knowing your niche, your business plan, your tar target audience, the problems you solve, what you're best at, what makes you uniquely you. Some of that inner work for your business and your business plan, that's going to tell you what you should be putting online. And if you don't know the answers to those questions, if I just rattled all of those off and you're like, well, I don't know who my audience is. I don't know what problem I solve. Like you need to do that work because that's part of your brand. That's part of who you are and part of what your company is. Yeah, absolutely. You can't tell the world who you are if you don't know who you are. So you have to make sure that you have that kind of locked down because that will then secure the confidence behind it. So many people that I run into are like, I don't want to be on camera. I don't, I don't, like, that's not happening. I don't want to speak. I don't know what to talk about. As soon as you actually know what to talk about and you have your content, you'll have no problem freely speaking about the stuff that you're passionate about. Go down those routes first. You can do more technical things or more factual based content later, but follow your heart at first and you'll be able to speak about that. No problem. And people will be able to, will be able to see your passion and your, your eyes light up and the excitement that you have. That's the content that will get your, your brand started. Such good advice. I know we've talked a little bit practically about capturing B-roll, about capturing like the fun clips, the fun pictures, the you, you in action type of stuff. Now, for people who are coaches or have memberships or have some sort of teaching aspect to their business, especially talking videos where you have to like talk to the camera, 
play a huge role because if people want to see if, if you can teach them anything. So do you have any tips for people if they're getting started thinking about creating those like talking head videos, like person talking to a camera? Yeah, definitely. So as you are thinking about what you're going to speak about, this kind of goes back to the hook a little bit. Think about exactly what you're going to cover in your video and then pull out the piece in there, even if it's halfway through the video, right? Halfway through your your paragraph that you're going to speak about, pull out the piece that's going to instantly connect people. Within the first second of them hearing you, they're like, I need to know more about this. And then you can go right back to the top of your paragraph and start about, like start talking about it. So get yourself a really good hook. I'm trying to think of an example of that. Like if you're like, Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to create content for yourself. And this is what you do, X, Y, Z, bullet points on the screen, right? But if I'm going to start my video saying, today, here's what we're going to talk about. You're like, I don't care what you want to talk about. Scroll next. But if I'm like, your social media sucks and I'm going to tell you how to fix that, you're going to be like, oh, well, mine kind of does suck. Let me let me fix that, you know? <laughs> so creating that hook and, and sometimes you can be a little controversial. Sometimes you could be a little intense. That's how you get people to stay on your video, stay on your platform. Um, another thing too, when you're doing like talking head kind of videos, don't be afraid to put in either B-roll or stock video and footage. Help use like graphics and videos like that to help kind of get your point across. If you're going to use an analogy about, I don't know, getting in a plane and then taking an Uber and arriving somewhere, like show those things to help kind of paint that virtual picture while people are watching you. And it'll also keep them engaged in your content. If it's just you sitting in the front of the camera and talking for a 30 seconds a minute, after that first like second, second and a half, if nothing is changing or moving, people are going to swipe right by. So you want to keep it super engaging, even if it's just you speaking. I watched this video and it was funny because my husband actually showed it to me. It was um, this guy that pretends he's super strong, like, or no, pretends he's a janitor, but he's super, super strong. So he pretends he's cleaning the gym and he challenges these like big buff dudes to like lift different weights and they just laugh at him. And then he goes and like lifts these heavy weights and they're blown away. But what's super interesting is it's filmed very still. Like someone is filming it and nothing is moving, but the edit is every, I would say like quarter of a second, half a second is moving, whether it's shifting the side of the frame, whether it's punching in, whether it's putting B-roll, whatever. And it was to the point where I watched it in a production way. And my husband was like, I didn't even notice that. I was just so entertained by it. But he stayed on the platform. He doesn't care about genders and lifting weight and all that kind of stuff. But it was interesting for the eye too. So I wouldn't suggest just having a video of you talking for 30 to 60 seconds because people aren't going to listen long enough if you're not giving them something to watch and see, you know, use the captions because a lot of people don't listen with audio. So make sure you have captions on your screen and then also supporting footage. It'll make a huge difference for people actually interacting and staying on it. Someone starts making talking videos and they wanted to create what you're talking about. They want to create a video that has captions, that has B-roll, that has punch-ins, like all of those things. How, How do they start doing that, right? That can feel like being a video editor can feel very overwhelming, but are there accessible ways that just like a regular person could start kind of creating shorts like that? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, you can edit directly in the apps. All of the apps allow you to edit directly in them. We use CapCut. So along with our actual video editing softwares, but CapCut can do so many things and they all have templates too. So not only can you just pull in captions if that's all you're looking to do, but you can really pull in these really cool templates that are moving that video footage for you. You don't have to figure out when should I punch in? When should I slide it to the left or the right or whatever? You can utilize those those apps. So CapCut is owned by TikTok and, and you can also pull trending audio into CapCut for both TikTok and Instagram. So when you post to the platforms, they recognize the audio and you go into the trending audio feed as well for the audio that you picked. So definitely using something like that. Um, there's another one called CapWing you can put captions on 
right within the editors. I mean, if you really wanted to dabble with like the actual editing softwares, you could, but you don't need to. For a lot of creating, CapCut can do what you need it to do for social. And I think one of the things that I'm really passionate about as a business owner and for other business owners is I think it's really important to understand how to do all of the tasks in your business. You don't necessarily have to be an expert, but the fact that I'm not a website builder, as an example, right? I could stand up a landing page if I need to. If something is wrong with my website, I likely can go in and fix it, fix the form, fix the thing. Now, there is a level that I cannot fix, but if there's a typo or the form isn't sending people to the right place, I could go in and fix that without having to utilize my team. That's great for me as a business owner because I have enough knowledge of it to do that. Same with video editing. I have like a a videographer on my team and I have a video editor on my team that know all the fancy things. But can I edit myself a reel of something I created at home by myself in a pinch? 100%. And I think that's really important because in today's world, we're so fast paced. Things are happening. If If you're in a niche where there's like lots of hot topics going on, you can grow really fast if you hop on that, right? Like you can grow fast if you can talk about that topic in that time. And if you're relying on a team member to edit every single video for you, you lose time and you lose that relevancy where if you're um, doing some of it on your own, you're going to grow so much faster. Like I love it when I work with people for social media. Yeah, we'll make your content. We can schedule it out. We can get things so you have that baseline, but you should be doing stuff on top of that that's maybe a little bit more timely and trendy where if you try to work that through me, like let me give you the consistency, right? Like I will I will make sure you're consistent, you're growing, you're steady. But if you want those growth like sp- bikes, you kind of have to have your finger on the pulse of whatever your target audience is talking about to jump on those trends. Yeah, that goes along with the consuming of the content. You know what's trending. You know how that could fit in. And it kind of, it it plays a little bit into your creativity too. It says, okay, how can I make this something for my business? But, you know, it so it shows what I do. So it's still useful content for my platforms. But also I'm I'm jumping right on the trend. I'm able to to hang with all of these things that could potentially put me in the viral status. Yeah. And and I think if you're starting your business, if you're starting out in this world, getting a baseline understanding of how all of this works for yourself is going to help you grow even more when you bring in a professional team to help you or you hire someone to help you do that in-house. Um, from your perspective, like when is the time? Like when is the time to bring on a team or bring someone in-house or hire a consultant to take over your social media management or your content creation or any of those things? Yeah, I think the best time to actually then, you know, upgrade, right? When you're ready to upgrade from doing it yourself to more of a professional status It's really when your business is established enough that you can say, I have enough money coming in that I can allocate some for my marketing. You can create a budget because social media falls right under that marketing bucket, right? You're creating this content. You're creating videos. Now I'm ready to have a professional make me some really good content that I could then potentially put ad dollars under so that more people are seeing it. So I think number one, do you have the money for it? If you don't have the money for it, keep hustling in the house because you will get there, but it's not worth trying to get rid of the little bit of money that you have when you could still do it on your own. Um, And then the next thing you would want to do is, you know, once your brand is established or you have a good following, maybe then you need to change up your content. Maybe you're seeing your views are dropping because it's all kind of the same stuff. Bringing a professional in or like you said, a consultant that can help you kind of come up with new and creative ideas that can make a big difference, too. Um, And honestly, when you no longer just have the time. Sometimes you just get to the point where you're so busy in the business and you, you're you either working with clients, you're creating product, whatever it is you're doing, you're running your business, you don't have time to be managing the social media and that's when you should bring in a professional because consistency is so important. 
it was funny. We were in a meeting the other day and my marketing manager said something that I was like, that is so true. She said that her generation being Gen Z, they use social media as a secondary internet search. So it's like Google for them, which was so interesting to me because being a millennial, we always just Googled everything. But when you're looking at a company, a restaurant, a business, you immediately go to their social media to see how legit are they? What does their food look like? Do I like them as a person? What's their personality like? It's just another search engine. So it's super interesting. Um, so when you're when you're no longer able to do it yourself, keep that consistent pace, then bring in a professional. And also professionals can help you with your SEO, like like generating actual traffic on your social media without having to pay anything extra just by using hashtags, audios, trends, all of those kind of things that professionals can help you with too. And I think that's so important, like bringing in someone really when you're ready to scale. So you have something that works, you're selling, you're bringing in revenue, you understand your product, you, and well, consultants can help with that, right? Consultants can help you do that baseline strategy, but that is a different thing. And I think that's really important. So either yourself, you are figuring out your brand, figuring out your offer. What, what's the problem you solve? How do you communicate? What is the type of content that brings in sales, right? You're figuring that out, figuring out your funnel. A consultant can help with that stage, but that's a different thing than scaling and growing. That's a separate thing. So a consultant can help you figure that out and work with you on that, but that's going to take time for that ROI of that payment to last. Then when someone takes over your social for you, they should just be amplifying whatever you're doing that works. I met, I talked to someone uh, this week or last week in a discovery call, and she just said, she said to me, I know if people book calls with me, I can sell. That's great. She so so she knows she needs a plan to help her book more calls and she's struggling getting those calls booked, right? She found a sticking point. She said, I know I have an offer people want. I know when people get on the phone with me, they will purchase my thing. I have a really great close rate, but I don't have enough calls. That is a great time to say, okay, I'm going to bring on a social media team who's goal is to book me calls because there's a clear goal, a clear ROI, and a, and a thing to use it for. You have a lot of the pieces. You have a sticking point. This is what I need to solve. So if you're sitting here and you're like, well, I'm doing my social media. I make sales when I share this type of video and product, but like I'm slow or every time I go live, I make sales. I had someone tell me that every time I'm live, I make sales. Well, then bring in a team to help you do that more often and more consistently to build that consistency in your business. Definitely have to go with what is going that you've seen help you, right? What has proven to work on your socials? You can't just go to a social media management team and be like, here, take over my social media. I don't know what to do with it because that's not going to give them any sort of direction, right? Like you're saying. So when we take on clients, we're like, okay, who are you as a human? What are you trying to get across? What is your product? What makes your product different? We go through this whole onboarding so that we can know exactly what has worked, what hasn't. And we do our own testing too. You know, you can't just expect that you're like, my social media is not growing. So I'm going to hire professionals that will grow it because that is not the case. And that's a very common misconception that professionals can just grow your social media. You also need to be having your mission and your confidence, like all the things that we talked about, you need all that established so that your professionals know which direction to take you in. We can't just throw up any kind of content, right? That's not going to help you. It's not going to just automatically grow you followers overnight, usually, unless, you know, you end up going viral, but that's hard to do. It's hard to do. You can't just jump on a trend and expect to go viral. So having your clear mission, your clear statement of who you are and who your business is will then allow your your professional team to then elevate that. So don't just say, I want more followers. I'm going to hire a pro because that is not, that's not how it works. Thank you so much. You provided so many great insights on all of this and things I'm going to take note of for myself and my own content. You know, we were able to talk through some super practical things like how to frame and how to use your camera better, what tools to buy, but also just like the mindset of being a content creator, how to think like one, how to grow your channel that way. 
if people want to learn more about you, what you do, stay connected with you, how can they find you online? Yeah. So our favorite platform is Instagram for us. We are at capture the concept underscore CT on Instagram. We're always putting out content of things that we're doing behind the scenes and also tips like we've shared today. Um, you can also check out our website, captureTheConcept.com, and I'm always available. So just shoot me a message and I'd love to chat. Even if you just have questions, I get very excited about all of this stuff and my creative juices flow. So send me a message. I would love to just connect. Thank you so much. And thank you for chatting with us today. And to all of our listeners, I hope this inspired you to, if you're not already, start creating content and build your personal brand and just get out there and get going. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for tuning in. Find the link in the show notes to join us in the Her First Collective, a free Facebook group to discuss the podcast, ask questions of our guest experts, and network with a group of female entrepreneurs who value collaboration over competition. Please subscribe, share, leave a review, and be sure to catch our next episode. What is one thing you can do today to prioritize you in business and life?